much speedier game. Yeah. Thank you for that. <laughs> it went much faster than the previous game. <laughs> yeah. That must have felt nice, right? Winning winning pretty efficiently and quickly. I don't want an 80-minute game. I'm sure they don't want an 80-minute <laughs> game either, but... Uh, those games are interesting to watch, I guess. Absolutely. They're bloodbaths, at least. You're asking, how do you top an 80-minute game? If you want to try to have some, have a bigger mark on the scene, uh, what do you do to, to, to top that? Somehow win before 20 minutes? I don't know how you do that, but somehow right. win before 20 minutes. It, it'd be pretty freaking hard, though. Because a lot of mid lane champions right now are just all about wave clear. So like, how do you end the game when they just clear the waves? So it's Old, efficient Cloud9 style, man. You just got to dive turrets all the time. Yeah, that's Work fun. Out. Yeah. All right, down to business. Last week when I spoke to you, you were definitely down on yourself. Weren't happy with your play, or really the team's play in general. What changed, though? Because we saw you come out really strong this game, and you guys just took over. Well, Pope Walter played too aggressively early game. He had one ward on the side of the left side. I saw him ward that. So the fact that he gave me a free kill with Meteos kind of snowballed the lane really heavily. He fell behind. And then I think also at like the 7 or 12 minute mark, uh, Helos came mid to try to push out to take blue. And Pole Pulter also was too far out again, so I just killed him again. And those two kills kind of just gave us complete control of Dragon early game. And we just had a really good gank by Meteos that helped me a lot. So, I don't know. We just played it much better. Well, you guys did obviously play really well. You brought out your first Yasuo of the split. You'd only played him, I think, twice before, three times before. Um, and one sort of thing with you guys is it felt like you've been taking some time to try to find out uh, how to play the game properly again. I remember the beginning of twenty thirteen or sorry, beginning of twenty fourteen, you guys were like, Oh, we're gonna learn to play more aggressively. We're gonna like learn the style. It'll take us some time to catch back up. Do you guys feel like you've solidified the Cloud9 game plan right now? I think we're definitely getting better or at least on the right track. So the first half of the season after I was still healing up, we're still trying to figure out like what to do, how to improve, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. We have a good game plan now. Our practice has been going much better. And I think just a lot of the faults early we had in the season is just my subpar play. I don't okay. think I'm at the best I've been or ever, but I think I've been playing better. Yeah. And that just translates into us having better games just because I do so much for the team as far as like shot calling. And if your mid lane is behind, it's just like the worst thing in the world. So I've been working a lot to try to make myself not and what's a word that's the opposite of an asset? Uh, just heavy a weight. A detriment. An yeah, anchor. I don't want to be a detriment to the team. So I, I've been working a lot to get better. And honestly, if if you look at all the AD carries in North America right now, Sneaky's by far the best one. And when you have the best AD carry in North America on your team, it makes your late game that much stronger just because he's, he's the best AD carry. So. Of course. Uh, so then how about the, the morale of the team? You were saying that you know, as long as you're feeling better about your performance, you're okay. Um, is everyone else feeling confident about Cloud9 now? Are you guys ready to take to the top? Yeah, so I think a lot of our play in the past few weeks has been very... Well, I'm, I'm looking for a word that's down. Passive? Favorite. Yeah, passive. Let's go with that. There's another word that starts. <laughs> Moving forward. We, we've been very passive, I guess. So I don't like that play style. I don't think that is our play style. And it just so happened like this meta hasn't really been fitting us as well, but we're trying to do what we can to be more aggressive. Because back in the past, we'd always control dragon. We'd always control buffs, towers, whatever. And lately, we've been giving them up. So we're trying to fix that. We're not giving dragons and turrets. So that helps a lot when they don't have free 2,000 gold from every dragon and stuff like that. All right, so well, speaking of aggressive plays, we actually have that 12 minute and 30 second solo kill from the mid lane. You kind of already touched on it a bit, but just walk us through it real quick. Let us know what's going on. Okay, so I, I saw a Helios come mid, and I knew their blue buff spawn, so in my head I'm just thinking, he wants blue buff right now, and he's way too far out. So I tell my team to come mid just in case I need help, but he's out of position and just dies for it. They, they wanted to get blue buff for Oriana so he could start harassing me again. But he got too greedy for the farm and just sacrificed his life, and that was a pretty big throw by them. All right, I want to touch a little bit more on the champion picks. We already talked briefly about the Oswald, but we also saw Rise come out. Um, it's the first time that Balls has played it this uh, year. He did play it five times last summer, 5-0, and oh, but it's been a while. So what have been the discussions around pulling out those new champions? Well, the meta has been slowly shifting back earlier in the season, I believe. It was all about like the tanky top laners. And nowadays they're rising out to be like Lulu, Ryze, Kale. Like the AP top laners have been like a huge thing recently. And Balls has always been good at champions that are like carry type uh, champions that don't need to initiate. Because he's he's not the most vocal person on the team by far, but he's like very good at being able to like, carry his own weight and carry the game. But he just has issues initiating fights. So you give him a champion like Kale, Lulu, or Ryze, and he just has to sit in the back line and do his job. And he's great at that. So. This meta slowly shifting towards our favor again, and I think it'll definitely help out that he can start playing carry top laners again, and it's more 1v1s now instead of 2v1s. So what do you think made that change then? Uh, because not like Renekton and Shivana have changed really any in the last six months or so. Why was it that you had to play Shivana and Renekton every game uh, you know, a few months ago, but now it's okay to play Ryze again? Well, Teleport made 
is a huge thing now, right? So if you're playing Renekton against like a Jax, uh, Rise or anything, if Renekton doesn't snowball the game, he's just gonna get outscaled, and then he actually doesn't do anything. Mm -hmm. So you see so many games where Jax just like becomes a monster against Renekton, spit push, just take turrets, ignore the guy. So without Ignite, you have no kill pressure on lane. Everyone can just run teleport. So lane dominant champions for top lane are just falling out of favor unless they're just split pushing AP range ones that can like boil the lane the entire game. So it's just back then you could. You could kill people. You run active and run ignite. You can tower dive Shavana level three. You could tower dive Wind level three, but you can't do that anymore. And that just makes lane dominant champions like Renekton and gone. Shavana's still good, but the AP top lane champions are just the best at the point for this meta. Okay. All right. Well, we're actually going to jump now to the end of the game since it was such a short game. Yeah, sure. Um, about 34 minutes in, you guys are knocking on their first inhib turret. With the Baron buff, we're going to pull up the replay. Just explain to me what the calls were to, you know, to keep going in face of face tanking the turret. Well, we were committing to the turret, and I believe if I use Wind Wall, we get the turret. I'm pretty sure I Q onto their Heliolus and Ultium. I didn't say anything here, but at this point in time, we're just doing what we normally used to. We don't have to talk that much. Everyone just knows what to do, and we're just killing the right targets. We get Tristana. Like, Balls is just in the middle of their team right now, doing like 20 billion damage, not dying. So it's just like, they can't ignore the rise and they just lose this team fight. They're too far behind in gold and we could force a fight like that. They would have had to give up that turret and inhibitor to try to come back into the game. Mm -hmm. But not only did they get outscaled, they, that was their last ditch effort to try to come back into the game. So they couldn't do too much about that when we can just brute force a turret and tank it and still kill them. So. Uh, so, uh, I have a couple of follow-ups on that one. Uh, I want to touch on what you just said a second ago, which is that you guys would be able to brute force that turret. Uh, we've had a lot of slow games recently. Um, Super Week, I think the second day, had like the longest average game length of like ever in the North American LCS. We just had an 80-minute game. Is this a lot of teams sort of being too uh, passive, or the word you are going to use earlier? Like, Are there more forces that you're seeing while, while watching these games? Or is is just like the, the champions that are getting played? I mean, you mentioned wave clear mids, but is it sort of the game doesn't allow pushing much faster, or, or are 32-minute games like this much more possible? I, th I think games generally will be long games unless teams get snowballed on that hard. But with everyone playing like Zig, Syndra and stuff, it's very hard to tower push on that because Ziggs can kill the waves. Syndra has kill pressure on your AD carry and he's the only one that can actually hit the turret. So when you have like these two champions that are very annoying to push first, be like the most dominant champions at the moment, it makes the game hard to end out early. But they, the reason we got to end that game so early was because they made a bad call to try to push mid after we did Baron because we could just run straight down and get the turret before they get back. So I think there are teams that are probably too passive with their leads. Say, for example, I think we played Chris last week. They had, like, 15,000 gold. Yeah. They, I'm pretty sure they could have ended that game earlier, but they, they were playing passive and scared, but they would win the game eventually. I think teams just don't want to throw and try and stay consistent, and teams are avoiding doing aggressive things at the moment just because it's... The meta has changed. So like, if you lose a team fight end game, you kind of just lose this game, and no one really wants to do that. So it's kind of annoying to play like that. All right. Final question is that with this game, you're now 11 and 8, which puts you automatically at a tie for third, given the end of the day, as two of the first place teams will lose um, as the day continues. Given that you play TSM tomorrow, who is one of those four teams, that's your chance at like bumping right up into that top slot. What's the game plan? Um, the game plan against TSM has always just been avoiding dying to be gears in the mid lane. He not only is he a phenomenal 1v1 laner, he also has the jungle pressure that's almost always near mid. So you have to be really afraid, and a lot of mid players will they play differently versus him, just because he's such a good player and he has the jungle pressure. So against TSM, I'm going to do my best not to die to them, and hopefully the game goes well for us. And I can't go into too much more detail, obviously, because, you know, they're probably... Well, they're not listening, because they're on stage right now. Absolutely. They got that white noise pumped into their headsets. So you're good. Give away all the secrets. <laughs> I think I broke Turtle's mouse today, too, by the way. So I, I lost my mouse. Sabotage. Today, and I asked to borrow Turtle's mouse since he used the same one as mine, and it kind of broke when I was using it. So, yeah. But you uh, won the game with the broken mouse. So, I mean, yeah. yeah. I had to use a different mouse that I've never used before. So that was interesting. Oh, my goodness. Good all right. For you. Well, <laughs> it worked out. Well, we'll see how that affects. I'm sorry, Turtle. Yeah, uh, I apologize. We'll see how that affects Turtle in a moment. But first, I want to thank you for joining us here at the desk. Congratulate you again on a very methodical win. All right, we're going to sweep the champs off the riff. But when we come back, we'll be reading our favorite Twitter responses. Then it's on to our next match, Counterlogic Gaming versus TSM. Stay tuned. <laughs>